This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Let's get right into your top local stories. A former San Isidro church choir leader accused of sexually assaulting a 15 year old girl was back in court today. 27 year old Rafael Magana appeared for a readiness conference this morning. He is accused of sexually assaulting one of his teenage choir members back in 2021. Magana pleaded not guilty back in August after being charged with four counts of sex crimes against a 15 year old. SDPD says Magana had access to multiple underage people people due to his job as a choir director for Victory Outreach People. The victim did not report the crime until this past March, but police say this delayed reporting is common. Nine migrants, including an eight year old child, were rescued from the coast that shares the border with Mexico. This happened over the weekend and in these images here you can see the migrants laying in the sand receiving first aid. Eight lifeguards in Tijuana had to cross the border by sea to rescue the migrants from the intense currents, passing oxygen tanks between the bars of the wall for at least 32 minutes. Three migrants fell into respiratory arrest and one of the women was in very serious condition when they took her out of the sea. Activists like Pedro Rios tells NBC7 these kinds of rescues show the desperation of those seeking to come to the United States. There isn't a way for them to quickly present themselves at a port of entry and to uh, make an asylum claim. And so many of them are either crossing through the ocean or through uh, climbing over or under the border barriers and this places them in greater danger. But it all goes back to the fact that the United States is not respecting asylum procedures and this forces people to find very dangerous ways of crossing into the United States. There has been a recent increase in falls from the border wall, which has strained San Diego emergency rooms. Rio says incidents like these will most likely continue until funding is prioritized towards humanitarian aid, as opposed to militarizing border communities. A second lawsuit has been filed against Miguel's Cocina in Forest Ranch after being linked to several E. coli cases. Dennis Bisson filed a suit Friday saying he got sick after eating mushroom, chicken and shrimp fajitas at the restaurant. The first lawsuit was filed Thursday after a woman says she needed medical attention after eating the restaurant's guacamole, chips and iced tea. A county spokesperson says there are now 20 known E. coli cases with at least seven hospitalizations. The specific food item with E. coli is still under investigation. People who got sick reported eating at Miguel's from October 6th through the 18th. Halloween is now just one day away, but the parties have already begun, which means there could be more drunk drivers out on the roads. As NBC7's Audra Stafford explains, even sober drivers will be faced with more distractions. More and more people throughout San Diego have been adding elaborate Halloween displays to their homes, like this one you see behind me here in Mission Hills, and they are a lot of fun to look at. Police say just don't do it while you're driving. Trick or treat. Tonight and tomorrow night, there will likely be a lot more people out and about than usual and in places where you may not expect them as they go to Halloween parties and trick or treating. So police are asking drivers to be extra vigilant. Look out for little kids who may not be looking out for you and don't try to multitask behind the wheel. Please, if you're going to be out driving around at Halloween, slow down, stay off the phone. And if you're going to go and look at Halloween decorations, pull over so that way when you're driving, you can devote all of your attention to driving. And if you don't really need to drive anywhere tonight or tomorrow night, stay home, walk or take public transit. From Mission Hills, I'm Audra Stafford, NBC7. Good tip. So what is our trick-or-treating forecast going to look like? NBC7's Ashley Matthews joins us now with a look. Hi, Monica. Happy Monday to everyone at home. Hope you had a great weekend. We are in weather alert because of this elevated to critical fire danger with these Santa Ana winds. We're experiencing very dry conditions, low humidity as well. Definitely want to be very careful, especially over the next couple of days. Warm temperatures too. Let's take a look at those temperatures for highs for today. We should see a beautiful day at the coast, mid 70s for the coast. Downtown San Diego coming in at 79 degrees, mid 80s for the inland valleys. Escondido 84, Ramona 81. Thank you, Ashley. Still ahead, the city of San Diego is looking to crack down on parking on public spaces, why they're moving forward with the new parking rules and the push to bring awareness and end detention centers around San Diego.
NBC7 and Telemundo 20 Response is dedicated to helping you. You guys were able to get a different result. I have so much gratitude. Whether it's in Spanish or English. We're one team. One team. Investigating, getting answers, making sure every phone call, every email gets a response. Because this isn't just our job. This is our community too. And we're here to help. NBC7 and Telemundo 20 Response. One team fighting for you and your money. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Welcome back. The city of San Diego is considering tougher regulations for those who park in the same public space for longer than three days straight. Some drivers have gotten around the issue by moving their car a couple of feet. But a week and a half ago, the city's public safety committee voted unanimously to change this. Drivers will have to move their cars at least half mile versus the current tenth of a mile. City leaders say this year alone they've gotten more than 37,000 parking complaints on the Get It Done app. This happens in areas like the beach communities and Claremont. Voting centers are officially open. You can cast your ballots at one of 12 vote centers. There's a November 7th special election, you may recall, to replace former supervisor Nathan Fletcher. Chula Vista will vote for a city attorney, and people living in the Fallbrook and Rainbow Water districts will vote on whether to break away from the county water authority. The centers are open daily from 8 to 5 through November 6th. Check out our trending bar at NBC7.com for more information on that. A four day pilgrimage came to an end in San Diego over the weekend at the Otay Mesa Detention Center. The goal to put an end to ICE detention centers. They also want to bring awareness to what's happening behind those walls. Organizations and advocates held a rally outside the detention center as part of a call to action for the government to end its contract with Core Civic, a security company that's been operating the facility. For some, the pilgrimage was a healing journey as their loved ones have been held at the detention center for months on end. He was a legal permanent resident. However, he was in prison. If you're not a U.S. citizen, unfortunately, we get deported. We're all humans, you know, dignity and receive people and protect them because like I said, tomorrow's not going to, we're not promised tomorrow. The group is also promoting its recently passed HEAL proposal signed by the governor earlier this year. It allows cities and counties to divert funds away from contractors and instead invest in community-based initiatives for those behind bars. Right now, they'll tell us they're working on a proposal to the city of San Diego to access those funds. We'll have a look at your weather forecast right after this. Looking for NBC San Diego on Roku? The easiest way to find us is with Roku voice commands. Just press the microphone button on your remote and say live TV and then say NBC San Diego. If you don't have voice commands on your remote, just scroll down to live TV, click the purple icon, go over to the left and navigate to news. Then head on down to NBC San Diego News. Once you got us, make sure you add us to your favorites and we'll always be right there for you. NBC San Diego News on Roku. Hello, happy Monday. Ashley Matthews here with a look at your weather for today. Uh, we do have a wind advisory in effect for everywhere in the tan on your screen here for the inland valleys and mountains. This is going to go until Tuesday, tomorrow at 8 p.m. Uh, those areas definitely seeing those gusty Santa Ana winds gusting at times 40 to 50 miles per hour. Quick look at San Diego's only 10 day forecast for you at the coast, upper 70s for today, low 80s for the inland valleys, mountains and deserts, cool in the mountains, 59 degrees and 79 for the deserts. Ah, looks nice. Day of the Dead or Dia de los Muertos is celebrated the day after Halloween, but hundreds of San Diegans celebrated a few days early this weekend in Old Town. It is one of the biggest Day of the Dead celebrations in town. So colorful, right? People enjoyed face painting as well as the sights of brightly painted sugar skulls and marigold decorations. Yeah, los Muertos is also a religious day, so we also remember all the um, to pray for our the angels, you know, the Dia de los Inocentes and all of that. So Dia de los Muertos is also great to celebrate and remember them in a happy way instead of a sad way. Impressive face painting, isn't it? Well, Day of the Dead is a way for people to pay tribute to those who have passed away. Families create altars filled with photos and items that were favorites of the people they're remembering. We have more coverage account on at NBC7.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. We'll see you on Halloween.